This video is going to explain what all that means, how that works, and what you should expect from the audio engine moving forward. I'm also going to offer up a short comparison where you guys have the opportunity to take out a pad and a pen and see if you can tell the difference between the two audio engines using sound samples from today where we leave the checkbox off versus putting the checkbox on. For those of you that would prefer a TLDR, here you go. The audio is now being rendered in 3D space using more accurate head tracking than standard stereo, which came before it. The Steam audio module does seem to make some good adjustments, and the initial response to what you hear is more subtle than Nikita originally alluded to. However, the audio engine itself is much more accurate than the old audio engine, even in its early stages. It will take some getting used to, but if you use it, you'll definitely notice an improvement in your audible spatial awareness. I can tell you that this will not be the end-all and be-all video on all things related to Tarkov Audio. I'm sure there are going to be science videos in the future, if by the time this upload not having been done already. By the likes of Veritas, who will likely give a more in-depth and accurate assessment of the audio engine, and possibly even broach on topics that I didn't think to test or cover. But anyway, I think this will be damn cool, because honestly... This is the kind of shit that gets me, like, super hyped to talk about. Uh, I fucking love talking about audio. I've broken this video down into two parts. The history of what binaural audio is and what it means, and by extension, the Steam audio engine and what that is, and the application of that audio in Tarkov compared to what it used to be. There are timestamps in the description if you want to skip to a particular thing, okay? First, what the hell is binaural audio? Binaural audio is commonly referred to as 3D audio. It is the way that we, as people, with two functioning ears, are able to hear in three dimensions. 3D audio recording comparisons are pretty commonplace in and around YouTube and Google, and I would highly recommend checking those out if you want to hear some seriously cool stuff. So I won't bore you with those details. If you've ever watched a better-known ASMR broadcaster, you see that they commonly use a pair of mics, not just one. This is because binaural audio, when recorded live, is done using a stereo signal, so you can get transmission of sound panning from one side of your head to the other, which assists ASMR lovers in getting those much-adored tingles. Most often, this is done using a 3DO binaural microphone that retails for around $400. Other high-end mics, like this one, called the Dummy Head from Neumann, retails north of $8,000. If you notice, in both of these examples, there's a very clear-cut distinction about them that is not commonplace for a standard microphone, which records in mono. And that is the distance between the two microphones and the shape of the bell or housing around it. In both of these cases, the bells of both mics are shaped like the human ear and are also gapped at a distance about the width of a typical human head and are thus given the quite obvious name of ear mics. The human ear and its components combined with the size and shape of the human head, oral and nasal passages, our sinuses, and some bone conduction, which is sound vibrating in the actual bones themselves of our skull, gives us the ability to translate spatial sound once all of these inputs are deciphered and compared by our brain. We only have two ears, but we can locate sound in three dimensions, those dimensions being range or distance, above and below, which is elevation, and side to side, or azimuth. One ear receiving sound is known as a monaural cue. The word monaural from Latin is from mono, or one, and oral, which comes from oris, which literally means ear. This is then compared to sound received by the other ear. This is known as a difference cue, or binaural, two ears, cue. So, Binaural audio, by definition, is the brain's interpretation of this three-dimensional sound as it enters the ear, changes in pitch due to which portion of the ear are hit first by the sound, and is then compared to the other ear. This is what is known as HRTF, or head-related transfer function. This is the basis of the Steam Audio Engine. A quick example that we've all heard ourselves. Close up, the boom of a grenade or a shot ringing out from a sniper rifle gives us the full range, complete with highs, lows, and mids of varying intensity. But if there is some type of audible impedance, like a barricade, a shack, or concrete walls, this modifies the tone that we hear over distances. This can even be shown in the sense of stuff like dust particles or the fact that the atmosphere on our planet even exists, 
leaves blowing in the wind. All of this stuff in between the source of the sound and our receiving of the sound absorbs some of those frequencies in varying degrees as it travels toward our head. For example, if I use an AGL on reserve, this grenade up close looks like this on a spectrum analyzer, maybe about 10 yards. At 25 to 30 yards, it sounds like this. A bit further out, it sounds like this. And considerably further away, in some obscure area where we're not quite sure where it landed, it sounds like this. This is because the game is simulating that lower tonal sounds travel further. This is also why when you hear grenade explosions or sniper shots from across the map, they sound like lower, guttural, more thunderous sounding tones, as lower sounds are less impeded by physical barricades and are the least absorbed frequencies of all of the frequency spectrum. Higher pitch sounds are more readily absorbed. The S's that frequency range are heard less, insofar as different directional audio. The idea is to attempt to simulate via different pitch and amplitude changes and other variations how a sound would come into your ear and thus assist someone in determining the height, distance, and direction of a sound. So, we're going to play a little game. What I'm going to do is throw six grenades in different directions, and we'll refer to those directions like clock hours. For instance, if I throw one straight ahead, that's 12 o'clock. If I throw one straight behind me, that's 6 o'clock. 3 is 90 degrees to the right. 9 o'clock is 90 degrees to the left, etc. I'm also going to randomly throw the grenade either high, low, or flat. For example, if you think you hear something being thrown straight ahead and at the same level as you, then it would be 12 o'clock flat. If it were to your right and above you, you'd say 3 o'clock high. Make sense? Okay. Because I don't want to add any further confusion, each throw will be done in pairs. One with the new engine and one with the old, but I won't tell you which engine is which until the end. And I won't tell you which direction or height you're hearing until the end. So test yourself and see how you do. Every grenade that I'm going to throw is going to be a VOG 25, and every grenade is being thrown from this exact location on the edge of the roof directly in front of this wooden box on top of White Pawn. So my 12 o'clock is facing directly at the window going into the SCAV school tech room, perpendicular to the building. Okay? So grab yourself a pen and paper, and let's see how you do. Perfect score is 12 points. One point for each one you got right. Leave a comment, let me know how you guys did, and we'll, uh, we'll see how you guys stack up against the test here. Okay? If you guys get a perfect score, million internet points. Well done. Trophy for you. Okay, hope you guys did well. Here's the results. Now, in every single one of these, I did say that I was going to change the order, but I actually didn't. The first nade of every pair was Steam Audio. The second nade of every pair was the old engine. The first grenade was 2 o'clock high. The second grenade was 6 o'clock low. Third grenade, 9 o'clock flat. Fourth grenade, 
10 o'clock high, fifth grenade, four o'clock low, and the sixth grenade, three o'clock flat. So here is what I've personally seen from my own interactions using the engine. At first, the sound bleeding that you can hear from side to side, because one ear hears it louder than the other ear, but the other ear still hears it, can cause you to second guess what you think you hear nearby. It's subtle in its difference, but the difference is there. Especially when you've subconsciously reacted to what it is that you thought you heard. What this tends to lead to, usually for me, is that I overcorrect or move in a more exaggerated manner toward a sound. If a sound came from my 2 o'clock, I might turn to 3, because I think it's more right, based on muscle memory from the old sound engine. As the last few days have ticked on, though, I've started becoming more accustomed to the engine, and I can tell you that it feels incredibly accurate. I think there's a bit more vertical accuracy than there was before, but obviously this is the first module, and I think it's still got some room for improvement. I also haven't had a true opportunity to be able to test out things like stairwells and intermediary floors like the server room on labs and stuff like that, but hopefully in a future video we'll be able to look into the potentiality of some bugs that exist in the current engine's iteration. The last thing that I will say on this engine is in regard specifically to CQB. There tends to be the greatest chance for misinterpreting these sound cues, or like I said, second guessing. Like this sequence here that I'll explain for you all. Okay, so what I've pulled up here in VLC Media Player is just a quick series of events that occurred during what we call a scav army on my streams. What I'm going to show you is myself and someone else that was actually ahead of me and, and the interaction and see if you guys can pick up on what you hear. You good? <laughs> Did you kill him? You didn't kill him. Fuck. All right. <laughs> okay. So, to go back in time. How what ended up happening here? So this is with Steam Audio enabled. And what I've noticed is that the sound comes through so well that you start second-guessing what it is that you hear. So as time goes on, we, I walk up to this breach in the wall and I hear gunfire. Now what this is, is somebody that's standing right about in here with an SA-58 that's shooting at the guy that went into this scav run with me in the doorway here in this little office. And then we hear a reload. You good? And if you notice, you hear a reload that moves off to your right ear. Okay? And we'll play this again. You good? Right? One more time. You good? So you can hear it as it progressively moves from the left toward the right as he reloads, which makes me think that this person moved from where they were standing in that little doorway over toward the right. <laughs> now, at this point, I'm not sure whether or not the person that's still alive is my partner or if it's the other guy, in which case he ends up verifying it. But in the meantime, I end up sending out an emote because one of the ways that we tell each other that we're not dangerous is to just emote like crazy toward each other. From here, I then go outside and then start heading down this little alleyway. One of the things that I neglected to do was turn toward my left and check the first door here on my left to see if there was anybody in that hall. But since I heard somebody's footsteps, I figured, oh, they must have walked down toward the right here. They're probably somewhere around the doorway in the hall or in one of these offices. Did you kill him? You didn't kill him. Fuck. All right. Now I notice my... Scav buddy is now dead in the doorway. Move further to the right. Did you catch that? So, what I initially thought happened in this case was that I got shot in the back. I thought that somebody had peeked the doorway around the corner from that doorway that I didn't check and shot me as I was going around the corner and I just got some really bad desync. But that's not actually what happened. 
What ended up actually happening was that my ears weren't wrong. It's just that I was so used to the old audio engine that I started second guessing what it was that I actually thought that I heard. So the first thing that I did was quick peek this doorway in front of me right here to see if there was anybody coming through. I didn't catch anyone, you know, did a little back and forth and then started moving forward. But what I didn't do in this case is check my immediate left through the window box. And if you notice, as we advance frame by frame here, you'll see the tip of an ear right there, right? And then if we go one more frame, there's the head of the player scav that shoots me through the window as I continue on. On my screen, he was only visible for two frames because I did not turn all the way to the left to check that corner. Because honestly, I've never seen anybody camp there before. Not that that's an excuse, but it is what it is. The point being, in this case, it's now become a little bit more customary to trust your ears. The audio engine, in this case, is so much more accurate than the old one, in my opinion, that I've noticed I overcompensate, I overcorrect. I'm used to turning further in one direction or another based on what it is that I'm hearing instead of just being able to pay very, very close attention to where the loudest point is as my head turns, because that's where they are. It's incredibly accurate. Well, anyway, guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. I hope that you guys found this to be as entertaining uh, watching it as I enjoyed researching it and looking into it and making it. If there's something that I missed or something that you think I should elaborate more on in one of these, uh, let me know, and I'll be happy to include it in some future dusting off of this topic as, uh, as time goes on. Okay? Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.